Have you ever wondered if a picture of your great great grandfather could be, well, hiding in the newspaper? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to search in old historical newspapers to, to uncover old family photos. Whether it's a wedding announcement, a local event, or even a feature in the society pages, these photos in the newspapers can give you a glimpse into your ancestor's past. Hey there, I am Lisa Listen, a genealogy expert with over 15 years of experience helping others find their ancestors. On this YouTube channel, I share my best strategies, tools, and tips for uncovering your family history and building a family tree without feeling overwhelmed. Now, today's video is sponsored by newspapers.com and I will be sharing a little bit more about them in just a few moments. Now, you guys know that I absolutely love researching in old historical newspapers for my ancestors. I love social history. I love finding the stories. I love following storylines through the newspapers and finding all those little things about their daily lives that are important to my genealogy research that I'm not going to find in maybe an official record. But you also know that I love seeking out and finding old family photographs, right? Well, I can put the two together because have you considered in your search for old family photographs, have you considered looking in newspapers? And if you have not done this yet, you need to reconsider. Well, today, much of the population is on social media like Facebook and Instagram looking at family photographs photographs of friends, photographs of events that they might have attended. And while our ancestors didn't have Facebook or Instagram, they did have the newspapers. Local newspapers often featured photos of everyday people, your ancestors, at large events like weddings, graduations, and even military service. You might find family portraits, candid shots from a community event, and well, even school pictures. So you can see that newspapers were covering more than just the headline stories. They were covering the little and the big moments in ancestors' lives. I mean, think about it. If your ancestors were active in the community, if they attended social events, or they held a public position, there's a good chance they were photographed. And even smaller local newspapers would feature personal stories or highlights of the communities, and these would include photographs. I want to thank newspapers.com for sponsoring today's video. They are the largest online newspaper archive now with more than 1 billion pages from the US, UK, Canada, Australia, and more. Are you as captivated by stories of your ancestors as I am? Well, newspapers.com is like a time machine, providing unparalleled access to three centuries of history. You can dive into their extensive archives to experience history as it happened and explore the news, events, and everyday moments that shape the world around us and our ancestors. Their easy to use search feature lets you filter your results by date, location, specific paper, and more. And when you find something interesting, newspapers.com makes it so easy to save and share your discoveries. So come explore 1 billion pages and ex and make infinite discoveries over at newspapers.com. Be sure and use the code Lisa Listen for an exclusive 20% discount off of your subscription. I will have that link and that code in the description below. So let's talk about the different types of photographs that you can actually find in the newspapers. Trust me, they are more varied than you think. One type of photograph that you might find would be a portrait. So you potentially could find a portrait photograph of your ancestor. This is probably one of the more common types of photographs that you might find. They are often featured in say an obituary. A military service announcement might have more of a portrait, a military portrait type of photograph attached to it. Or you might find a portrait in a person of the week section that perhaps a local, regional, or even national newspaper might have run. If your ancestor held a public role within the community, there is a good chance that a portrait type of photograph of them appeared some at some point in the newspaper. The next type of photograph would be more of an event photograph. Now, newspapers love covering big events, especially things like personal milestones. Think weddings or an anniversary and even birthday celebrations. Have you ever found an unexpected photograph of your ancestors in the newspapers? Be sure and let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what your experience has been. Now, another type of photograph that you could find would be a group photograph. Now these could be things such as a school group, a work crew, or even a church picnic. Community events were a big deal and newspapers loved showing off who attended. You could potentially even find a photograph from a family reunion tucked in the pages of that local newspaper. What an incredible find that would be. Now let's not forget about the sports page, sports clubs. Was your ancestor say on the local baseball team? Or maybe they were in a particular social club. These groups would often have their photos taken, particularly if in a sports event, if it was after a big game or a large social event that perhaps a club had put on. And if you're lucky enough to have a professional sportsman in the family, in the family tree, then you might have a better opportunity to find some of their photographs with their team as they progress through their careers. I know one of the interesting things I discovered in my own research was we had a baseball player who played on a minor league baseball team in Virginia. 
And it was really fabulous to trace his career through the newspaper. And I will tell you, that will catch the attention of the children in your family. So don't forget about those sports pages. Now we mentioned in earlier that under the portraits that you might find a portrait type photograph in an obituary, right? But I wanted to kind of bring that back up again because that is a place that we can certainly find our ancestors. We as researchers are used to researching in obituaries and it might seem kind of a somber place to go looking for a photograph, but we absolutely don't want to overlook the obituary sections in a newspaper for those photographs because a photograph with that obituary may be the only time their photograph appeared in a newspaper. So make sure you are perusing that section of the newspaper. Now, had you ever thought about looking at advertisements for photographs of your ancestors? Don't forget about those business advertisements. Small business owners, doctors, even salespeople sometimes have their photographs taken to be featured in their business ad in the newspaper. So if your ancestor was a business owner or a prominent figure in their profession, make sure you're checking those advertisements photos as well. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera around at this point. I want to take you into over to newspapers.com. I'm going to show you some of the different examples and different types of newspaper and different types of photographs that you can potentially find within the historical newspapers. And I know that I'm going to convince you to be able to, to do your own digging as well. We're over here at newspapers.com and I want to show you the types of photographs and how, uh, the different types of photographs that you might find in the newspapers in your search and to actually really make sure that you are including newspaper research as part of your search for old fam photographs. So we talked about some of the different types of photographs that you can find ever. And I mentioned, this is what I did a search on sports pages. So I wanted to look for some sports related type of photographs to give you an idea of what we might see in the newspaper. And I found some that were kind of a little bit, um, not quite what I was looking for, but I thought really good examples of why we want to, you know, if you have an ancestor who was prominent in a certain sport or a certain field that you might be able to find the newspaper. So I did a very generic search for sports. Um, I picked a date, 1951, and I picked a location, Cincinnati, Ohio, and I hit Sir. All right, so we come over here and we have a number of things that we can actually choose from. And so I thought, you know, as you scroll down, you can see all the different ones. We're at the Cincinnati Inquirer. So let's pick on this one right here. Get it where we get. And you can see it's highlighting sports because that is... Um, keyword I use. And again, here we are. We are up here, as you see. This is the Cincinnati Inquirer from December 20th, 1951, um, and you know, page 34. So we're kind of back in the sports section here for this. And we see a number of things. The first thing that kind of caught me here we have an obituary. So we have a gentleman who, you know, we talked about pages that might be in photographs that would be included with an obituary, kind of a portrait type. And that's exactly what we hear. He was a well-known sports editor. And so within his obituary, we see um, Mr. Lawhead portrait photograph there. So this is definitely kind of an example of that obituary type of portrait photograph, as well as somebody who is well-known within their field being highlighted here over here in the sports section of a newspaper. Now, if we come up here, I thought this was another interesting one here. I'm just going to enlarge this here for just a moment here. And so... I was struck by this kind of, it's a, obviously a bit more casual photograph and I absolutely love the more casual photographs because I think in those we start to kind of get people's, a little bit of a personality. We kind of can catch them a little bit unguarded. So it's a, not as formal, not as posed. You can see a little bit more of who they are. And when you read this here, um, it says that Hank Larcello, not sure I pronounced it right, Tennessee's All-American quarterback was a visitor here stopping at the home of his girlfriend, Miss Betty Valker, daughter of Dr. and Mrs. Lewis E. Valker. And it goes on to talk about what they're doing and they're looking at his trophy that he got. So here we have um, a young man who is actually playing down in Tennessee. Um, he is obviously a well-known and very celebrated college football player. And so we have his photograph here and I just think this is wonderful. And we, uh, you know, obviously we have his girlfriend. Now this is interesting. So. Do they ever get married? I don't know, but it's kind of fun to be able to see that in the newspaper. So again, when we're thinking sport, you can think sports teams, but you can also think a little bit outside of the box, kind of a human interest slash sports type of photograph. Now here's another example of a group type of photograph that would be an interesting, that would be helpful in your genealogy research. So this is actually from 1938. It's from Belleville Daily Advance, Bel Belleville, Illinois. And what we're saying here is actually a confirmation last. It does, and this particular group photo here does tell us um, that it is the Trinity Lutheran Church, a Redbud, 
and it is list out all of the individuals here. So this is actually a potential to, you know, put a fa literally put a face to a name with just newspaper research. So this is an a really nice way of looking for these group photographs. It tells us about the individuals in this particular photograph. It connects them to a church. That would give us actually as research a place to start looking for more records that way. We're looking, we could have potential with these group photographs to find people who might be related. Same surname, maybe their cousins. So it would be really interesting to, to, when you're looking at an individual in this group, to research out to see if she's actually, he or she could be related to any of the other members of the group or not. Another interesting thing, I always love to look for human interest stories. Never underestimate a human interest story in a photograph for a newspaper because sometimes they needed to make space but they also just wanted to share something interesting. And this is quite comical, but I thought this was really cool. Um, the local girl with King Solomon. So this is a young girl, um, you know, identifies her as Ruth Dietrich. She is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Algie Dietrich. It gives a location where she lived and her Persian cat, Solomon. So I just thought this was a really fun type of human interest story. And don't, don't overlook this. This is kind of, we would see this on Facebook today. Well, back in this time period, Back in 1938, it's not going to be on Facebook. It's going to be in the newspaper. So I thought this was a, a fun thing to show you and to showcase that it's not all about they had to be famous for something, but a good human interest story, if your ancestor was involved, could absolutely be in the newspaper as well as their pet cat. So this is an interesting thing. We, so here's an article from the Blairsville Dispatch, and this is Blairsville, Pennsylvania from 1952. And yes, we oftentimes see military highlighted in newspapers. We'll see formal portraits of, of people. We'll see, we'll see local heroes that might be in the local newspapers. But here's the one too, and it's not necessarily the best picture. Granted, they're not always the easiest things to see, but that's okay. I wanted you to actually see that piece of it too. But this is a picture of Lieutenant Norman Levine um, from Baltimore. And he was a volunteer at Severance Hospital in Korea. So this would have been during the Korean War, I'm assuming. And um, he was volunteering. And so we have a picture of him doing service work. So this is something, again, that we're going to see highlighted in some of the local newspapers. So certainly if your ancestor was in the military, look for things such as their formal portrait. Look for things as their volunteer opportunities. Look for them to be highlighted perhaps in a local newspaper for having done some type of service work. We will definitely be seeing this as well. Here's another example from the Richmond Times Dispatch in 1926. And I thought this was an interesting grouping photograph that I wanted to make sure I showed you. And this is a photograph of all the children who attended vacation Bible school that summer at Pine Street Baptist Church. Now this might be something common that you would see kind of in the summer months in the southern states that I research and and they would have vacation Bible school. Very traditional to have it kind of in June kind of after school let out for all the children. And so you can see this beautiful group photograph uh, group there for Pine Street Baptist. Now what does this tell you? Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't identify all of the individuals, you know, we would love to see that. But what it does tell us is this is, a, you know, a large group of children. If your ancestors were in the vicinity of the Fuller Baptist Church for this time period, you might want to then reach out to the, um, the church to see what other information they might have, other photographs that they might have. There is a nice little article here to the left that talks about the Pine Street Baptist Church and, you know, they started their vacation Bible school and it does talk about who the faculty are. And so we can learn a little bit more about it here um, and some of those who are maybe adults who are involved in it. And so we can find some surnames there that might be useful for us. But this was a big deal. It made the newspaper. So I would at this point, if, if I suspect that perhaps my family was part of that church, that there might be a child in there who was you know, one of my ancestors in this photograph, I would actually reach out to perhaps this church, if it's still in existence, to see if they had other photographs that were taken during this time period and if they might be able to help me get some of these identified. Because it's very possible they might have records for that that the newspaper obviously did not print. So that's, another, that's an example of a really good group photograph that you could use as part of your research. So what I want you to remember here is that newspaper papers then and now were more than just about the words. They captured the faces and the lives of people in the communities of which they served, which makes newspapers another resource to discover what your ancestor 
actually looked like. Now, if you would like to learn more about your old family photographs, be sure and watch the video on your screen now. How to identify five main types of old photographs.